mexico in the early years of the century appeared more prosperous than it had ever been under the iron rule of dia's wealth flowed into the nation yet millions of farmers had lost their land because democracy had become an empty word even death couldn't wipe out your debts they must be borne by your children you were a serf a peon this man's crime was running away you could not run away for you belonged to the land and the man who owned your land owned you soul and body this was the rule of the iron president who had become a dictator but it is said that among those who might have witnessed such a scene was a very rich landowner named Don Francisco Madero owner of vast estates most of the laws written to bring happiness to him and his class yet a question was growing in his mind why this injustice why torment why the whip has happened to mexico but a gentleman doesn't interfere with the private problems of his host and besides it was only a peon after all yet that night sleep would not come to don francisco madero all night long the sound of a whip must have echoed in his heart for a book appeared in mexico that was destined to shake to the foundations the old regime the presidential succession dias has been reelected seven times here is a writer who says this must not be dias restricted the vote this must not be planned this must not be francisco madero has challenged destiny at last a miraculous wave of hope sweeps over mexico until from a million throats is sung viva madero viva madero madero for president madero for president this is too much the dictator is aroused at last madero is dangerous to the peace of the nation arrest him during the presidential elections see to it that he's locked in the cell of a jail and afterward to taunt him take him the news that dias as always as trial but no prison can now hold madero for every roof tree hides a rifle every place where men suffer hides a soldier of madero down with dias viva madero and as the whole world watch Mexico under the leadership of Madero himself broke the chains of 30 years forging sent Diaz into exile and the people hailed a new president Francisco Madero beloved of the people apostle of democracy forever enjoy it don Francisco Madero fill your heart with it you must bid farewell to the leaders of the revolution and turn to the protection of the federal army From this moment all must be legal all must be true to democracy if only they will all be true to you From the moment President Madero walked into the great rich room from which Diaz had ruled for so long he was forced to make a choice rule as a true representative president with his friend Pino Suarez as vice president beside him or take revenge on the landowners who had opposed him and drown the enemies of democracy in a bath of blood Madero had long since decided what he would do A few days later they stood facing him knowing their lives were in his hands waiting for their doom No instead of revenge here rights of all new land laws no favors for the rich but no illegal seizure either so does the first new president in 30 years make his choice from that instant francisco madero was a doomed man since madero leaves us our power we will use that power against him behind closed doors they met to plan a campaign to confuse and bewilder the people first send out saboteurs to wreck the new democratic laws then perhaps we can poison the army itself madero promised the peons the land where is that land 
Madero sits in his palace and dreams up impractical dreams. Madero promised us land. Where is the land? Madero deceived the peasants. Madero lied. A terrible blow to the dreamer. This news that his enemies are using his gifts of freedom as weapons against him. Why not take back those gifts, Senor Presidente? Take up a pen. Take away free speech. Take away free press. Use the army. Jail anyone who protests. This is what Diaz would have done. Impossible. Democracy stays in Mexico. Too late. Too late. Treachery and betrayal. The army itself was corrupt. Whole regiments of the federal forces rose against their president. For 10 days, Mexico City was a bloody battlefield, and thousands of innocent people died in the streets. History calls it the tragic 10 days. He may have known that the end was near, and he should have run away. Instead, he took a harsh course he hated. Call the soldiers in from throughout the nation, put down the trouble at any cost. No. His general, wanting the presidency himself, takes off the mask. The trap is sprung. They were now the power. Some of them had been friends in happier days, and they would give Madero a chance. Yes, a chance to sign a document in which he would agree to exile repudiate the ideas that he had given to Mexico, and then he could go free, find peace, security for the rest of his life. It might well be death. There is no other way. Mexico must live on. If I go into voluntary exile, they will lose faith in the free Mexico of tomorrow. That is all that matters. February 22nd, 1913. So having destroyed the body of a man, you are through with him. No. The death of Madero was a torch that burned away all confusion and doubt in the minds of the people. Since Madero had been ready to die, then democracy was worth dying for. And through the months that followed, they rose up again and again, until with his whole regime, the man who had betrayed Madero and Mexico became a thing of the past. And fulfilling the dream of Madero and the dream of Mexico, there have been others. Zapata and Villa, Obregón and Carranza, and a host of others who forged a new constitution. After them, the great builders, Cardenas and Avila Camacho. The great modern nation of Mexico moves forward to fulfill its dream. But as long as men honor the word valor, they will not forget the name of Don Francisco Madero, a little man, five feet two inches tall, who is one of the giants of the passing parade.